Hello, my lovelies. Juniors, it's time for Crossing the Creek. <laughs> this is chapter two. Tomorrow, I hope to go to the library and get the actual book. Not that I don't love doing this, but I need to record on this. <laughs> the quality will be much better because this is again on my Chromebook so I can read from this. Okay, anyway, Pet and Patty began to trot briskly as if they were glad to. Laura held tight to the wagon bow and stood up in the jo in the jolting wagon. Beyond, beyond Pa's shoulder and far across the waves of green grass, she could see the trees. And they were not like any trees she had seen before. They were no taller than bushes. By the way, yeah, I made this big old cow. And you can undo it and put it over your head. Oh my goodness. There's some little, I think I've got it all inside out. So I'm showing my strings. Ooh, that's not pretty. Let me see if I can turn it around and hide that. <laughs> Terrible to show my strings. Whoa, said Pa suddenly. Now which way, he muttered to himself. The road divided here, and you could not tell which was the more traveled way. Both of them were, both of them were faint wheel tracks in the grass. One went toward the west, and the other sloped downward a little toward the south. Both soon vanished in the tall blowing grass. Better go downhill, I guess, Pa decided. The creek's down in the bottoms. Must be this is the way to the ford. He turned Pet and Patty toward the south. The road went down and up, down and up again over gently curving land. The trees were nearer now, but they were no taller. Then Laura gasped and clutched the wagon bow for under, for almost under Pet's. In Patty's noses, there was no more. There was no more blowing grass. There was no land at all. She looked beyond the edge of the land and across the tops of the trees. The road turned there. For a little way, it went along the cliff's top. Then it sharp. Then it went sharply downward. Pa put on the brakes. Pet and Patty braced themselves backward and almost sat down. The wagon wheels slid onward, little by little, lowering the wagon farther down the steep slope into the ground. Jagged cliffs of bare red earth rose up on both sides of the wagon. Grass waved along their tops, but nothing grew on their seams straight up and down sides. They were hot, and heat came from them against Laura's face. The wind was still blowing overhead, but it did not blow down into this deep crack in the ground. The stillness seemed strange and empty. Then once more the wagon was level. The nearer crack down which it had come opened into the bottomlands. Here grew the tall trees whose tops Laura had seen from the prairie above. Shady groves were scattered on the rolling meadows, and in the groves deer were lying down hardly to be seen among the shadows. The deer turned their heads toward the wagon and curious fawns stood up to see it more clearly. Laura was surprised because she did not see the creek, but the bottomlands were wide. Down here below the prairie there were gentle hills and open sunny places. The air was still hot under the wagon wheels. The ground was soft. In the sunny open spaces, the grass grew thin and deer had cropped it short. For a while, the high bare cliffs of red earth stood up behind the wagon, but they were almost hidden behind hills and trees when Pet and Patty stopped to drink from the creek. Just making sure this is still good. The rushing sound of the water filled the still air. 
all along the creek bank all along the creek banks the trees hung over it and made it dark with shadows in the middle it ran swiftly sparkling silver and blue this creek's pretty high pa said but i guess we could make it all right you can see this is a ford by the old wheel ruts what do you say caroline whatever you say charles my answer get read right across the creek and if it's too deep yikes pet and patty lifted their wet nose as they pricked their ears forward looking at the creek then they pricked them backward to hear what pa would say they sighed and laid their soft noses together to whisper to each other a little way upstream jack jack the dog was lapping the water with his red tongue I'll tie down the wagon cover, Pa said. He climbed down from the seat, unrolled the cat canvas sides, and tied them firmly to the wagon box. Then he pulled the rope at the back so that the canvas puckered together in the middle, leaving only a tiny hole too small to see through. Mary huddled down on the bed. She did not like Ford. She was afraid of the rushing water, but Laura was excited. She liked the splashing. Pa climbed to the seat, saying, They may have to swim out there in the middle, but we'll make it all right, Caroline. Laura thought of Jack and said, I wish Jack could ride in the wagon. Pa did not answer. He gathered the reins tightly in his hand. Ma said, Jack can swim, Laura. He'll be all right. Poor Jack, he's had to walk. He's got to swim. The wagon went forward softly in the mud. Water began to splash against the wheels. The splashing grew louder. The wagon shook as the noisy water struck at it. Then all at once the wagon lifted and balanced and swayed. It was a lovely feeling. The noise stopped and Ma said sharply, Lie down, girls. Quick as a flash, Mary and Laura dropped flat on the bed. When Ma spoke like that, they did as they were told. Ma's arm pulled a smothering blanket over them, heads and all. Be still, just as you are, don't move, she said. Mary did not move. She was trembling and still, but Laura could not help wriggling a little bit. She did so want to see what was happening. She could feel the wagon swaying and turning. Splashing was noisy again, and again it died away. Then Pa's voice frightened Laura. It said, take them, Caroline. The wagon lurched. There was a sudden heavy splash beside it. Laura sat straight up and clawed the blanket from her head. Pa was gone. Ma sat alone holding tight to the reins with both hands. Mary hid her face in the blanket again, but Laura rose up farther. She couldn't see the creek bank. She couldn't see anything in front of the wagon but water rushing at it. And in the water, three heads. Pa's head and patty's head and no pet's head and patty's head and pa's small wet head pa's fist and the water was holding tight to the to pet's bridle laura could faintly hear pa's voice through the rushing of the water it sounded calm and cheerful but she couldn't hear what it's what he said he was talking to the horses ma's face was white and scared lie down laura ma said Laura lay down. She felt cold and sick. Her eyes were shut tight, but she could still see the terrible water and Pa's brown beard drowning in it. And there you go. Hope you can see that okay. Looks like you can. Oh, that would be so scary to me. For a long, long, <clears throat> for a long, long time, the wagon swayed and swung, and Mary cried without making a sound. And Laura's stomach felt sicker and sicker. <clears throat> From the front wheels, then the front wheels stuck, struck, and grated. And Pa shouted. The whole wagon jerked and jolted and tipped backward, but the wheels were turning on the ground. Laura was up again, holding to the seat. She saw Pets and Patty's scrambling wet backs climbing a steep bank, and Pa running beside them, shouting, Hi, Patty! Hi, Pet! Get up! Get up! Whoopsie-daisy! Good girls! 
At the top of the bank, they stood still panting and dripping, and the wagon stood still safely out of the creek. Yay! Pa stood panting and dripping, too, and Ma said, Oh, Charles! There, there, Caroline, said Pa. We're all safe, thanks to a good tight wagon box well fastened to the running gear. I never saw a creek rise so fast in my life. Pet and Patty are good swimmers, but I guess if I guess they wouldn't have made it if I hadn't helped them. If Pa had not known what to do, or if Ma had been too frightened to drive, or if Laura and Mary had been naughty and bothered her, then they would have all been lost. The river would have rolled them over and over and carried them away and drowned them, and nobody would have ever known what ha what became of them. For weeks, perhaps, no other person would come along that road. Well, said Pa, all's well that ends well. And Ma said, Charles, you're wet to the skin. Before Pa could answer, Laura cried, oh, where's Jack? They had forgotten Jack. They had left him on the other side of that dreadful water, and now they could just and now they could not see him anywhere. He must have tried to swim after them, but they could not see him Strugg struggling in the water now. Laura swallowed swallowed hard to keep from crying. She knew it was shameful to cry, but there was crying inside her. All the long way from Wisconsin, poor Jack had followed them so patiently and faithfully, and now they had left him to drown. He was so tired, and they might have and they might have taken him into the wagon. He had stood on the bank and seen the wagon going away from him, as if they didn't care for him at all, and he would never know how much they wanted him. Pa said he wouldn't have done such a thing to Jack, not for a million dollars, if he had known how the creek would rise. When they were in midstream, he would have never let Jack try to swim it. But that can't be helped now, he said. He went far up and down the creek bank, looking for Jack, calling him and whistling for him. It was no use. Jack was gone. At last, there was nothing to do but to go on. Pet and Patty were rested. Pa's clothes had dried on him while he searched for Jack. He took the reins again and drove uphill out of the river bottoms. Laura looked back all the way. She knew she couldn't, wouldn't see Jack again, but she wanted to. And there she is. Can you see her in the very back? It's little tiny. She didn't see anything but low curves of land coming between the wagon and the creek. Beyond the creek, those strange cliffs of red earth rose up again. Then other bluffs, just like them, stood up in front of the wagon. Faint wheel tracks went into a crack between those earthen walls. Pet and Patty climbed till the crack between became a small grassy valley. And the valley widened out to the white to the high prairie once more. No road, not even the faintest trace of wheels or riders passing could be seen anywhere. That prairie looked as if no human eye had ever seen it before. Only the tall wild grass covered the endless land and a great empty sky arched over it. Far away, the sun's edge touched the rim of the earth. The sun was enormous, and it was throbbing and pulse pulsing with light. All around the sky's edge ran a pale pink glow, and above the pink was yellow, and above that was blue. Above the blue, the sky was no color at all. Purple shadows were, were gathering over the land, and the wind was mourning. Pa stopped the Mustangs. He and Ma got out of the wagon to make camp. And Mary and Laura climbed down to the ground. Oh, Ma, Laura begged. Jack has gone to heaven, hasn't he? He was such a good dog. Can't he go to heaven? Ma did not know what to answer, but Pa said, yes, Laura, he can. God, that doesn't forget the sparrows, won't leave a good dog like Jack out in the cold. Laura felt only a little better. She was not happy. 
Pa did not whistle about his work as usual, and after a while he said, And what we'll do in a wild country without a good watchdog? I don't know. And that's the end of that chapter, I think. It appears to be. Okay, guys. So I am going to try to... I will. I won't try. I will. Go to the library tomorrow. This is still sticking out. Grr. I messed up place. <laughs> I will go to the library tomorrow and get the book. Not that I don't like reading it from here. It's great. And the pictures are good. They're probably going to be black and white in the book that I get. But we'll see. Went to the library yesterday. Picked up the wrong book. Granny's got to be more careful. Well, guys, be sweet and don't be ugly. And I hope you have a great day today. It's Sunday. I think it might be the 10th. Yes, tomorrow is the 11th, which is Veterans Day. So, um, if you know any service men or women, just tell them thank you for their service. Whether they are still in or whether they are retired from it now or out now. I'll say a big thank you to Ola Joe, who was one of the squirrels who was in the service. There are probably lots of others too, but that's one I know. Be sweet. Don't be ugly. See you tomorrow. Love you. Bye-bye.